Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop for another project video. I just got back from vacation, so I'm very excited to do this. I want to show you all the modifications that I've made to the Shea Poco 3 CNC machine and the enclosure. And these changes have been a real game changer for me and helped me out a lot. So I wanted to share them with everyone in case you're looking to make some of these changes too. And you can see how I did it and I'll tell you how they worked for me. So stick around. Okay, so one of the very first modifications and upgrades I made to the CNC enclosure was the lighting. And the reason I did the lighting first is it was just way too dark to see what I was doing, especially when the garage door wasn't open and it wasn't a sunny day, or I'm trying to work at nighttime and it was just way too dark. So I installed these remote control LED lights in here. There's three LED light strips. They screw to the top, they come with all the screws and all the hardware, and I'll share a link to the place where I bought them on Amazon, so in case you guys want to get a set for yourself. They were pretty cheap, I believe it was around $20, so it wasn't that much money, and it's a huge improvement, so check this out. So you can set a timer on the lights. You can also dim them, so if you want to dim, set the dim down. I want to make them real bright. I always leave them on the brightest setting because I don't see any reason to dim the lights. And it has made a huge difference. I can see so much better in here. I can see everything I'm working on. It's very simple. It's three LED lights. They all plug into each other. You just screw them to the top and it lights this thing up like Christmas. So it just works off a 110 outlet and I just ran the cord down inside here into where all the electrical is down below and plugged it in and just used the remote to turn it off and on very simple. So the next upgrade that I made is I added some of these remote control outlets to the CNC and actually a couple other places in the shop. I'll share that in a future video. So I use the remote control outlets here in the CNC to control the dust collector and the router as well as turning on the CNC computer. So I'll show you how that worked. I plugged in the extension cord that the router is plugged into as well as the dust collector into a remote control outlet. So then when you hit the button, the dust collection and the router both turn on at the same time all in one swoop. So basically I leave the on switch on for the router and for the shop vac that I use for the dust collector and then when I want to turn them on I just hit the power button on the remote control and it turns them both on at the same time. So I can get everything all completely set up. I can shut the door to the enclosure then with one button and turn the router and the vacuum on at the same time. I also set one of these up and I plug the computer in to turn the computer on for the CNC. So the actual CNC machine control board itself I plugged into one of these so I can turn it on and off just by using the controller. So if I'm sitting over on the computer and I want to turn the machine on, I don't have to get up and come over here and hit the switch, which is easy enough because it's right on the inside, but I have it right on the remote control. It just makes everything more efficient. So I can do everything as far as turning everything off and on easily just with these remote controls. I've also mounted the switch that's on the wire for the computer to the CNC right here on the side with just a couple of little wire mounts. That makes it easy. I can just turn it off and on right here as well if I want to, but the remote control is really handy. So the other modifications that I've made is to the dust boot. So the dust boot has been working really well. It's a 3D printed dust boot, and at some point I'll share a video with you on how I made that, but at this point it's working really well. I did it off camera a while ago when I first got the CNC machine, but the dust collection hasn't been 100% great. It hasn't been capturing as much of the dust as I would like it to. So what I did is I picked up a roll of neoprene, which is just like a, a rubber, and I cut a skirt to put around it that will bring the dust collection down closer to the piece that's being carved so it can collect more of the dust. And I also put a piece of neoprene around the top where the vacuum connects to for the dust collection so it's a much snugger and tighter fit. And speaking of the dust collection, I picked up a 25 foot piece of this flexible hose. It's two and a half inch hose and it works great. It's, it's pretty heavy, pretty stout and it's very rugged. You can't pull and you can't pull and rip it apart or anything. It's pretty solid and it's working really well. 
Attaching it to the dust collection is it's holding all of the power of the suction for the dust collector so much that when I turn it on the hose actually retracts itself. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty powerful. And as a bonus, one of the things that I realized is this hose with this adapter that I have fits perfectly on my random orbit sander, which is really handy because I can use this enclosure as a place to sand small projects with my sander and just hook the hose right up to it and with the remote control turn the dust collector on. It's been really really helpful and it was something I kind of realized after I put this all together. So if you're looking for a great place to use as a sanding station you can slide your CNC back, use the bed of the CNC to do all your sanding on and you can just turn your dust collection on with the remote control and go to town doing all your sanding meanwhile capturing all the dust at the same time. This has been really helpful for that. So what I did with the dust collection, I purchased a dust deputy, which is just a small cyclone separator for dust collection. In conjunction with my Porter Cable Shop Vac, these all work together in order to do the dust collection for the CNC machine. So I took a five gallon bucket and I cut a hole in the lid and attached the dust deputy to that in order to separate the dust. And I attached the hose from the vacuum to the top of the dust deputy and then I attached the hose that goes through the ceiling of the enclosure. I used some of that neoprene here to make this more of an airtight fit where the hose goes through. I basically just drilled a couple holes. I measured the size of the hole and I used a jigsaw to cut the hole out for this. Slid it through there and just with some Gorilla Tape and some of the neoprene I made it a nice airtight fit. I put a couple of zip ties on the top part of the hose so the hose doesn't have a tendency to pull down through. I attached that two and a half inch hose to the side of the Cyclone dust collector so it collects all of the dust and chips all inside of the bucket. I don't have to empty the vacuum out as much. One of the things I do plan on doing is mounting the bucket and the Cyclone over on the side of the CNC enclosure. I'm either going to attach it directly to the side of the CNC enclosure or to the wall so this way I have easy access to the bucket and I can take it off and on and just take it outside and dump it. I'm also going to get a gamma seal so I can screw and unscrew it off of the five gallon bucket to make separating that a lot easier. So over here on the side of the CNC enclosure, this is where I usually use my computer to do all the controlling of the CNC. I've had to run the cable to plug my laptop in through the front door and run the cable for the CNC USB connection to the computer through the same way. And so what I did to make this easier is I actually drilled a hole right here, right next to where the computer is on the inside for the CNC machine and ran the USB cable through here. And again, I used some of that neoprene. That stuff's coming in really handy for doing a lot of these things to make that an airtight fit so the dust doesn't come flying through that hole where the USB cable is coming through. And then when I'm not using it, I just have a screw that I put up here and I just hang the cable, the USB cable for the CNC up on that screw when I'm not using it when I need it. I can just pull it down and plug it into the computer and I'm ready to go. And another big improvement that I almost forgot to mention is this little Bluetooth keyboard. I learned about this Bluetooth keyboard from Ben Myers over at Myers Woodshop. I'll put a link to his channel down below and the link to the video where he introduced this. But this is a small little Bluetooth keyboard. I believe it was $30 or $40. If I can find a link, I'll put that in the description as well to where I bought it on Amazon. But this has become very, very useful. When you're sitting and you're trying to align and control and move your CNC, to zero it out or bring it forward. You don't want to have to stand by the computer while you're trying to line things up. It, this makes it very easy. So you can stand right by the CNC while you're controlling it. So you got an up and down and a left and right arrow to control the movement of the router as well as the z-axis using the page up and page down buttons and it's all controlled using a little wireless adapter that it comes with and it just charges right off a of USB so it's rechargeable and has come in really useful for me. But it's basically very simply, you just plug it in, my computer recognizes it as a wireless keyboard, and that's exactly what it is. It's got a little touch pad you can actually control the screen with, you can do right, left click, pretty much anything you can do with your keyboard and mouse normally, you can do from this small little handheld keyboard. Combined with having these windows in the CNC enclosure, it's been very useful. So just wanted to share that with you. 
And as you know, everything can always use improvement, so I'm sure at some point in the future I'll make some more modifications and upgrades to the CNC. If you have any suggestions or comments, I would definitely love to hear them if you could put them in the comment section below. If you have any other ideas, ways that I could possibly improve, it would help me, but it would also help anyone else who might be down in the comments as well and reading those. But so far, this has been working great. I can't think of any other additions or upgrades that I'm gonna need to do. So as usual, I appreciate everyone watching. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you like this video, and we'll see you on the next video.